Welcome to Sri Narayana Guru College Coimbatore. The college is affiliated to Bharatiya University. It offers UG, PG, MPhil and PhD program in Arts, Science and Social Studies. The Department of Biochemistry organized two-day national level webinar on recent trends in biological sciences on 21st and 22nd May 2020. The department is highly grateful to the management, Sri N. Prabhagaran, Chairman, Sri P. M. Vasu, Secretary, and Dr. M. Ilangovan, Principal of the College, for their encourage and support to conduct this national webinar. Day 1 Session 2 at 2 p.m. Talk on Marine Natural Products, a potential source of drug molecules. The resource person of this session, Dr. M. Anand, Assistant Professor, Department of Marine and Coastal Studies, School of Energy Sciences, Madurai Kamaraj University, Madurai, Tamil Nadu. 1984. So, uh, within a period of, uh, say, uh, 30 years to 40 years, we can find more of uh, uh, compounds being increased, really added to the research from the marine source. So, this can be attributed to for many reasons. One is, uh, as the advance in the sampling technology has been uh, increased, like the sophisticated instruments has been coming to play for sampling the organisms from the marine environment, and also uh, the input of many biotechnological tools, like you, you can say microarray, and lot of uh, technologies like PCR, all these technologies in the advancement of research has helped to boost this particular findings of marine natural products from marine organisms. So before, uh, again, you go into the details of marine natural products from the marine environment, you should know what is the uh, structure or overview of the marine environment. So we all know, uh, I mean, most of us are familiar with the marine environment from the coast, the beach and the waves you can see in the ocean. But when you deep dive into the ocean, you can find the ocean uh, is not so conducive for us to live because as you, the depth increases, you find a lot of changes in the physiochemical parameters. So like you can find here, as the depth increases, the temperature decreases. And as you go deep into the ocean, the density increases as along with the pressure. As the depth increases, pressure also increases. Similarly, the salinity is start, I mean, in the surface, it's slowly decreasing, but at, after a period of time, it slightly increase and uh, remain saturated or constant. So you cannot find the, through the water column, through the ocean, from the surface to the deep ocean, the physiochemical parameters are not same. It varies across the depth. So as the depth increases, the ocean is being mainly classified based on the depth. So based on this classification, we can identify three prominent zones in ocean. One is pelagic zone. The pelagic zone is the complete water column of the ocean. The benthic zone, which is the zone associated with the seafloor and uh, the region between high tide and low tide is the uh, intertidal zone. So this is the zone where most of our uh, uh, anthropogenic influence we can see. And the, the, the last zone is abyssal or a horizontal zone. And this is a zone called a deep ocean. Okay. So from this slide, you can see that the light penetration is restricted to 200 meters. So beyond that, there will be a very diffused light or no light. So from this, what you understand here is 
as the depth increases the physiochemical parameters of the ocean varies and the light intensity also varies so the life as such in the surface waters is not in the mid column as well as in the deep ocean so why do marine organisms produce natural products so normally any organism as a defense mechanism produce natural products and uh, another concept of uh, saying is that if the marine natural products are more prominent because the marine natural products are living in a very uh, high pressure environment and also the uh, the environment in which the marine organisms living is not so conducive they has to overcome they have to overcome the extreme temperature or extreme cold or extreme uh, salinity or whatever it may be so the temperatures or the physiochemical parameters which is prevailing around the uh, organism is not so conducive so in order to consistently overcome this pressure of the environment the marine organisms will be continuously producing the secondary metabolites as a defense mechanism so that is the first clue or point we get that marine organisms are potential source for marine natural products the next point is they prevent other organisms uh, from moving into their space so in order to prevent other organisms to moving into their space they keep their prey territory or keep their defense mechanism strong and also they secrete secondary metabolites for their mating purpose or uh, like pheromones type of uh, secretions and also to protect from the predators they secrete some secondary metabolites so uh, you know marine or we all know that 70% of the earth is surrounded by ocean and hence the diversity of this uh, marine organisms are more and more into the fact that we can find out of 33 animal phyla so far described 32 are represented from aquatic environment and in that 15 are exclusively marine so that means the most of the uh, organisms what we see across the taxa in the taxonomy you can find all the representatives in marine environment so hence the diversity is more and of course when the diversity is more the structural molecules are the secondary more metabolites what they secrete is will, will be definitely more and uh, as i told you uh, the environment pressure is the main key for these organisms to secrete secondary metabolites the biodiversity is more the uh, any organisms play their defensing mechanism so they attack for signaling and hence the chemical diversity is there in the marine environment and this leads to a finding of potential new drugs as i told you this is again a pictorial diagram you can find here a lot of uh, uh, zones has been uh, classified here the epipelagic is the surface waters mesopelagic as the depth increases bathypelagic and abyssal pelagic as the depth increases you can find the light intensity also decreases and the complete absence of light you can find after mesopelagic zone so uh, similarly you can find uh, the uh, the uh, continuous or see, um, i mean uh, diurnal rise and fall of water in the tidal region is called intertidal region where the organisms will be uh, depends on the topography will be exposed to 12 hours exposed to, to sunlight and 12 hours submerged in the ocean environment so this is the diverse habitats you can find in the marine environment when you when you go through a cross section of a marine environment you can find this is a land and ocean uh, uh, coastal region and you can find immediately there will be a mangrove uh, plants and followed by seagrass vegetations and followed by coral reef ecosystem and then it will be an open ocean so this is a Uh, a, a typical representative of an ocean environment but this cannot be the uh, same as such in all the places 
where some places will be exclusively marine mangrove environment some places exclusively of sea grass and leading directly to the open ocean or whatever it may be and this is a representative of ecosystems in the marine environment so these are some of the representatives marine ecosystem uh, we can find uh, in tamil nadu the big uh, mangrove forest is in pichavaram in near chidambaram and you can find the coral reef ecosystem lot of corals and um, many of us will be uh, having a doubt whether corals are an animal or a plant or a stone it is an uh, animal a cylindrate and uh, this is a seaweed ecosystem uh, where you can find in um, most of the rocky shores and these are the seagrass ecosystem you can find in the sandy shore and well uh, when you uh, uh, when you wanted to know more about uh, the secondary metabolites of marine organisms there are a lot of secondary metabolites i have given very few secondary metabolites which are mostly researched in the uh, uh, pharmaceutical or biotech industries the first one is bioactive marine sterols so this is again uh, a common uh, sterol what we come across in our day to day life like cholesterol this contains uh, fused four ring core structure and uh, their main biological roles can be found in hormones and signaling molecules and uh, next is alkaloids uh, alkaloids you can even see in uh, caffeine caffeine is an alkaloid uh, this is nothing but the basic nitrogen atoms okay the next are polyketones these are uh the compounds containing alternating carbonyl and methylene groups and uh, bioactive terpenoids and these are multi cyclic structure with oxygen containing functional group you can see here the oxygen fun containing functional groups in between and polysaccharides you can find a, a, a common sugars but these are polymeric carbohydrates composed of monosaccharides units bound together by a glycosidic bond and the next is bioactive acetogenins that is characterized by 32 or 34 carbon chains containing oxygenated functional groups including hydroxyl ketones epoxides so on so now bioactive sterols so you know uh, as i told you like a common cholesterol uh, it's a compound of marine sterols we can find in uh, marine organisms these marine uh, i mean these sterols are mostly isolated from marine invertebrates plants and fungi so marine uh, representatives of exclusive phylum echinodermata where you can find starfish sea cucumber see a chun etc so these organisms are potential source of these bioactive marine sterols and the next one is marine sponge and you can find a different coloration pattern of marine sponges it is one of the most potential organism for uh, pharmaceutical industry and the next are octocorals these are octocorals or we call it as a sea fan and these also uh, very promising organisms for uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry and you can find these sponges and octocorals are living in the world of darkness cold and high pressure so of course as i told you when there is an extreme uh, environment for these organisms they will be more potential for getting or isolating novel bioactive compounds you can find here Uh, one of the common example is in sterol is 5A8A epid epidioxysterols. You can find here and the properties like anti-proliferant, cytotoxic, anti-fouling, uh, fascinoids, and uh, they also uh, act against human cancer cells. So a lot of references are available for these findings. And the next are alkaloids. you can find alkaloids from uh, tunicates as well as marine sponges 
and uh, you can find plaquin amine A and plaquin amine B from plaquina species. And the tunicates, eudistoma species, you can find eudistomin C. You can find their activity can be again as uh, antibacterial and antifungal as well as antiviral. These are uh, commonly found, uh, tunicates are commonly called as sea squids and uh, they are mostly found attached uh, to the docks, rocks or underside of the boats. Then polyketides. Uh, the polyketides you can find uh, again from tunicate, uh, mollusk or uh, uh, conus snail. And these are the organisms you commonly call as sea hare or sea snail. And uh, here I should prominently uh, give importance for this marine gastropod mollusk, uh, which is having um, a very, uh, a very dangerous venomous gland by which uh, a micromilligram of uh, uh, these toxins can be able to kill a human. So like this, uh, I mean, you can find some of the uh, compound, apnidine, dolastatin, and uh, zyconitide. Uh, zinconitide, these are some of the uh, compounds which have been under research, and they mainly contribute for cytotoxic uh, behavior, antineoplastic, and uh, they binding to presynaptic calcium channels, sometimes like uh, acetylcholine, uh, channel uh, breaking and also linking properties. These corners from uh, uh, toxins having a prominent role. And bioactive terpenoids. These are mostly found in um, seaweeds. You can find here halimida, then penicillus and uh, eudochia. So these are uh, most common uh, um, uh, seaweeds uh, where you can find cytotoxic uh, property, anti-angiogenic activity and these are some of the compounds which are under clinical trials and also a uh, few uh, compounds from these seaweeds are already into the market. Then polysaccharides. Then polysaccharides you can find mostly from meritrix, or we call it as a, a bivalves or clams. Then uh, again seaweeds, uh, codium and the hypnea. Uh, these are codium and hypnea very common in our uh, the coast, in uh, Tamil Nadu coast, especially in Gulf of Mandar region. And uh, as I told you, these are simple polysaccharides, but they have a very good activity against uh, virus, especially it has been proven activity for anti-HIV uh, activity. Uh, and the main compound here is galactan sulfate or polysaccharides. So now the, com the most uh, qu question that uh, uh, comes to our mind is when you have such a property of antiviral uh, activities in uh, marine natural products, what is the status of uh, these uh, uh, compounds in uh, uh, COVID period. And uh, of course, uh, recently, the Reliance Industries has uh, uh, given a press release stating that marine red algae, uh, por porpidium, uh, is having an uh, activity to uh, be used as a coating material in sanitary items, which has been used as uh, uh, a preventive uh, items or preventive uh, uh, measures to counter this COVID in a pandemic. Next, the marine natural products as a potential inhibitors against the marine protease SARS coronavirus 2, a molecular dynamic study. So this is a very recent uh, article which has been already um, available uh, online 
and this particular article is published on 15th may what actually this particular article says is they do a bioinformatics type of approach where they, uh, as i told you the uh, shown you the previous uh, uh, some of the potential compounds as are already available as chem informatics database in the bioinformatics sites so from their uh, uh, database they take the screen these uh, molecules and try to dock them with uh, uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, proteins so that they could be able to screen uh, what will be the possible organism or what will be the possible source for us to uh, look for a, a drug molecule. So this is a recent research has been going on. And uh, Next is seaweed holobiont. Uh, as I was uh, talking to you in the previous slides, seaweeds uh, uh, play a major role in uh, giving uh, a lot of novel bioactive compounds. Uh, here you can see a small fragment of seaweeds can house uh, various symbiotic associations with uh, virus, bacteria, and fungi. Uh, and this association, a symbiotic association, can able to bring in more of uh, secretions in uh, seaweeds. So that is the one reason you can find seaweeds are more potential source for uh, uh, bioactive compounds. And uh, the symbiotic association with other organisms also mutually be benefited between these organisms uh, for defense mechanisms or whatever may be their survival will also add uh, importance for uh, this novel bioactive compounds. And uh, again, for the seaweeds, uh, some of the prominent seaweeds are uh, into uh, research as well as into the product are listed here, microalgae and macroalgae. And their effective usage in the treatment of degenerative diseases, cardiovascular diseases, vitamin, antioxidant, anti-tumor, paint, antibiotic, antiviral, anti-fouling, anticoagulant, etc. It goes on. So, uh, without uh, seaweed, we will not uh, uh, find any of this pharmaceutical uh, products. So, uh, seaweeds plays a major role, especially not only in the pharma industry, as well as in our day-to-day -day life, starting from your toothpaste to your ice cream, whatever you come across in your day-to-day -day life. Seaweeds plays an important component as an uh, agent. Next, uh, some of the commercial and these uh, few slides I will go through very fast because uh, uh, we have a very uh, short time duration. And these slides, I mean, these are some of the uh, products which are commercially available. I uh, I. Uh, uh, brought into these slides and you can find pharmaceutical industry against antiviral, anti, uh, antivirus, uh, acyclovir, cytosar, uh, cytosar and fluorescent probes, uh, green fluorescent proteins where you can find more of the uh, fluorescent dyes and the deep vent DNA where you use in uh, polymerase enzymes you use in your PCR uh, uh, reactions and cosmetics. Uh, any seaweeds particles you name, it will be available as a, one of the component in the uh, cosmeticals. I mean, uh, face cream or whatever it may be. And the nutrient uh, supplements. Here I should make a note that uh, uh, in this uh, COVID period, we all much worried about uh, increasing or stabilizing our immunity. These seaweeds plays a major role in uh, increasing your immunity. Uh, especially the consuming seaweed habit should be uh, practiced in our uh, uh, food habits. So that will one way improve our immunity. And uh, these are some of the uh, proven uh, uh, effects of uh, seaweeds and other uh, marine organisms for anti-diabetic uh, like uh, uh, anti-obesity and the anti-tumor agents you can find in bryozoans, uh, sea hair and tunicates 
and uh, you can find a few are in uh, phase one, phase two clinical trials. Few are licensed already, like um, uh, the uh, acidians. They all show a promising role in uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, novel uh, pharmaceutical products to the market. And uh, tunicates, gastropods, sponges. Uh, you can find more of its activity. And uh, actinomycetes, again sponges. Again, uh, you have sponges, dinoflagellates as uh, fermentation analog, cell culture. The same, uh, your PCR chain reactions, small polymerase. Well, so from this you can find uh, here the sponges, echinoderms and the seaweeds are most promising uh, uh, organisms for novel uh, marine metabolites. Here, uh, when I say a lot of organisms are available for uh, uh, extracting uh, secondary metabolites, we should also be very cautioned that these organisms cannot be exploited as such because these organisms are uh, uh, if indiscriminately getting exploited will be i think some inter uh, somebody is not muted hello participants kindly yes, mute your mic okay so uh, we should be very careful that which organisms we are using and that particular organism should not be in the list red list or something like that or in the verge of extinction so in that case uh, we cannot indiscriminately harvest uh, sponges or corals from the marine environment because they are under a red list uh, that is uh, one of the challenging um, uh, issue in exploiting uh, uh, natural products from marine sources and uh, you can find apart from uh, these organisms fishes I mean mostly uh, already available as uh, a lot of uh, oil uh, cod liver oil or whatever it may be in the market uh, especially the uh, squalamine compound is being used uh, uh, tested as an against tumor activities and it's also available in the market like this, a lot of uh, uh, fishes, uh, which is uh, having a potential fatty acids, has been already into the market. And especially cosmetics. Cosmetics is a very big industry right now, uh, mainly focusing on marine natural products. And here, uh, the advantage is when you use the cosmetics, it also acts as uh, 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 cosmeceuticals. That is, uh, it acts, uh, if you apply on the skin, it should improve your skin uh, um, uh, resistance to other anti, as an antibacterial, antifungal agents, as well as it should add uh, aesthetic to your uh, uh, cosmetic value. And uh, as, as a modeled uh, um, uh, data, you can find here, uh, from the past evolution, distinct past fossil records and all, uh, over a period of years, uh, most of the organisms from the marine environment is getting extinct. The projected uh, model says that uh, the more than 10 times will be higher than the current rate of the extinction. So why this because of extinction? Uh, when, you, uh, when you are interested to harvest uh, marine natural products, uh, from uh, uh, the environment, you should also be aware that how these uh, organisms are, whether in the sustainable manner being harvested or it is being getting extinct to the verge. Of course, this is the uh, condition where you can find for marine environment. The excessive trawling activities which is happening in the ocean, uh, bringing a lot of zonides. Uh, uh, of the organisms to the shore and just discarded on shore. So this makes the uh, particular organisms population uh, is getting affected to get regenerated in the marine ecosystem and is uh, getting a lot of uh, 
uh, threats for extinction. The next is uh, the cost and risk analysis. Uh, I mean, millions of marine species are available, and from there, only uh, lakhs or thousands uh, 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 you will be collected and uh, screening. And out of that, only few thousands are tested for pre screening, and uh, some hundreds are in the initial activity. And uh, when you find the hot leads, it will come uh, to 10 or less than 10. So the success rate will be uh, very uh, meager in the top when you have been screening. When you have been going down to the hot leads, the success rate will be more. So here the hurdles are it is very difficult uh, for you to locate the organisms in the marine environment, to sample the right organisms from the right environment and screen that particular organisms for further activity. And the cost and risk analysis is more when you go for sampling, uh, screening a lot of organisms, and uh, it's uh, like uh, of uh, uh, screening in a blind uh, way, it is very difficult. You have to incur more of uh, laborious activities for screening the marine organisms. And uh, uh, of course, this is uh, uh, to sum up, I think uh, I have another uh, 10 minutes. Uh, to sum up uh, this, uh, we have very medi um, I mean medical, biological and non-medical activities. All the three activities you can find the application of marine natural products. And uh, in our India, you have a lot of potential for uh, harvesting marine, or, uh, marine organisms to do marine uh, natural products research, starting from West Bengal to Gujarat. You have a lot of uh, scope for uh, uh, sampling and uh, doing marine natural products research. The statistics says that from uh, Zoological Survey of India, uh, we have 844 species of marine algae and uh, a lot of farming activities, commercial farming activities are going on. As I told you, you cannot exploit from the organisms from the wild and you can even do commercial farming and from there you can extract the uh, metabolites and the sponges you have 486 species imagine a lot uh, diverse species we have arthropods uh, you have uh, lakhs 1 lakh 50 thousand uh, around the globally is there of which 40 thousand only has been described then you should know what is the potential of these organisms the coral reef biodiversity is out of 218 species 16 j 60 genera are available in our indian waters then future prospects and research. As I told you, unexploited taxonomical groups has to be uh, screened so that that particular organisms will posing a major uh, interest for our extracting novel uh, bioactive compounds and uh, promoting new and improved platforms uh, like uh, uh, remotely operated uh, uh, vehicles to go to the to reach the deep oceans to uh, harvest or sample the desired organisms and uh, next uh, these are i mean these are the some of the points i just wanted to share with you uh, so improvement in uh, these technologies uh, sampling technologies will improve uh, the extraction of marine natural products and uh, identification of novel metabolites to the medical and pharmaceutical industry. Thank you so much. And for any feedback and queries, you can just write to my email. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you so much. Excellent presentation, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Now, uh, any questions? Sir, there is a question in the chat box, sir. Okay. I will read it out, sir. Yes, please, ma'am. Can consuming marine fishes can protect us from COVID-19? This is a, um, uh, say actually, uh, I can I can tell you, uh, uh, to COVID, uh, to, to, to contract this COVID pandemic, what uh, most of the researchers say is stabilize and improve your immunity. Okay. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. So, so that is the important uh, uh, object uh, we should uh, have it in mind. In okay. uh, pertaining to this question, of course, when you consume fishes, especially uh, 
a small fishes okay not big fishes okay. especially small fishes will improve your immunity especially because they have omega 3 fatty acids so that yes, will sir. improve your uh, immunity as well as stabilize your immunity but uh, you cannot say that it will directly have uh, an effect against covid but it will definitely improve your immunity okay sir next question ma sir next one question sir yes does any pollutants and waste sediments in ocean can lower the standard and virulence of marine natural compounds uh, of course this is uh, again a uh, 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 very important uh, uh, area of research i can say it's a, uh, it's, it's it's a very uh, uh, very important question for uh, uh, research uh, as i told you marine organisms will secrete secondary metabolites when there is an extreme environment or extreme pressure they have to overcome right so okay. uh, as a, a uh, uh, as an hypothesis i can say that uh, definitely a marine pollutant uh, or any of the anthropogenic influence on marine environment will definitely improve their novel secretion of bacteria compounds say for example uh, we have studied in our lab uh, in our marine lab in our department uh, the heavy metal toxicity has given a lot of uh, uh, biomarker stimulants in uh, fishes bivalves etc similarly a, a extreme ph variations is an another area of climate change studies we are undergoing in that we can we have found that variations in the uh, ph uh, in the environment uh, of course when there is an uh, uh, industrial influence secretion there will be a different uh, ph variation in such and sort of ph variations we are doing in a different ph variations on climate change that sort of ph variations will also having some of the uh, physiological and biomarker uh, secretions we have uh, experimented in our lab so definitely the pollute uh, pollutions add uh, a novel bioactive compounds but uh, you cannot take it as a sense that we have to pollute the marine environment so we can oh, without okay. without pollution we have lot of novel uh, bioactive compounds in the marine environment next question okay question. sir sir next one question sir can yeah. marine organism will be affected by covid 19 one of the participants has been posted sir <laughs> so uh, we can uh, so far uh, i am not a virologist so i cannot say that the marine organisms are affected from uh, a virus there is no report uh, so far uh, initially when there was a covid outbreak uh, there was a, a, a rumor that uh, consuming fish as uh, uh, is one of the reason for covid or something like that but it is not uh, uh, right uh so to my knowledge uh, so far there is no report of covid uh, to marine organisms so okay. uh, we cannot concretely say on this okay okay sir sir one more query sir yeah can you touch upon uh, any agencies or organization that will help one to collect marine sponges or bacteria any agencies agency? there is no agency there is no agencies or something like that if you wanted to do research on uh, sponges or you wanted to do research on uh, uh, any marine uh, environment uh, first you should find that whether that particular organism is listed in the schedule wildlife schedule okay. like i told you the sponges is listed in the wildlife schedule and the, the conus is also listed in the wildlife schedule so like this first we should know whether the organism is listed in the wildlife schedule if it is in the wildlife schedule getting permission is very very difficult uh, unless until for the extreme uh, uh, relaxation of the rules like of a covid outbreak for other organisms you should uh, first analyze the review of literature what is the distribution point of these organisms approach the fisherman and approach uh, any nearby uh, institutions 
if you are working on uh, interest on gulf of mannar uh, our lab is okay. nearby so that we can give you which particular region the organisms will be distributed and uh, how these organisms can be collected the only thing is um, uh, my personal suggestion is if a person working on any marine natural products or such an organism the person has to go to the field and observe the organism and collect the organism that will be the best practice because if you rely upon a fisherman he may go there and he may come with the organism or what is not of interest to you so uh, there is no agencies as such you have to get in touch with the uh, departments or information from the local fishermen about the distribution or collection of organisms sir again one more question sir yeah uh, you think yes. she wheat from shore is uh, healthy or not she shore is healthy or she not she shore uh, uh, of if course not, eating sea weed how we can use this if not how But, we can use this sea weed sir yes ma'am actually uh, actually uh, there are lot of salads are being made from uh, sea weeds salads are being made from the sea weeds uh actually uh, in india we have uh, very little choice of eating seaweeds but uh, i uh, i think in oriental countries a lot of uh, seaweed salads have been had, uh, taken regularly in their diet seaweed soups are been taken a lot of uh, preparation uh, it's very simple preparation only you have to clean wash and uh, uh, not much cooking of boiled you can eat or in some cases you can use the extract and take it as a juice so lot of um, uh, recipes are available uh, in the uh, internet regarding uh, using of sea weeds uh, both as a raw as well as cooked semi cooked or half cooked you can eat it so not uh, sea weed eating is uh, not a, a big uh, side effects but uh, you should see that Uh, particular species or seaweeds alone can be uh, consumed like patena grassleri or things like that so that you have to see the literature and you can use that as such yeah okay okay sir sir one more question sir yes ma'am sir what yes, are all the methods what are the methods used to remove salt from marine samples after doing the methanolic extract of it so you, you you have to do that before uh, uh, itself see normally the complete wash with ills itself will go to uh, will lead complete um, uh, uh, detaching of uh, salt from the uh, any specimens like seaweed or water maybe if you are taking uh, the, the tissues uh, the salt uh, uh, secretions will not be in much thing because it will be get deposited you will be taking a supernatant of your extracts only so sedimentation and pellets itself will be in uh, more uh, recommended approaches than adding some salts or some coagulants or something like that so this is the final question i think so sir yes ma'am uh, can pollution decrease the uh, marine environment can pollution can pollution decrease the secondary metabolites of marine environment no actually this is uh, uh, related to the one question we before asked before uh, yeah, whether yes, yes, sir. yeah yeah whether pollutant increase because uh, uh, pollutants will definitely add secretion of uh, biomarkers only okay sir that's all sir okay ma'am thank you so much thank, thank you thank you very much sir Thank, yeah, you, thank you sir thank you for all the participants and the organizers for giving me this opportunity narayan sami sir yes 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 hello you can proceed sir okay okay uh, on the behalf of the college sri narayan guru college and uh, behalf of the principal dr m ilangoban uh, i thank uh, dr anand from uh, madurai kamaraj university Uh, so thank you sir for accepting our thank invitation you. to present a webinar today uh, you, it was you, a very you. nice presentation sir and uh, your thank queries you. were sorry you just uh, very kindly answered all the uh, queries so i th thank on behalf of everyone uh, once again i thank you sir thank you very much sir
थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सर डॉक्टर रदी यू कैन माइंड सर यस सर यस सर ओके थैंक यू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स वी आर गोइंग टू वाइंड अप द सेकंड सेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट डे थैंक यू ऑल tomorrow morning we'll have the third session at about 11 o'clock thank you for the third session uh, separate uh, link will be sent to the uh, registered mail ids and you can uh, uh, join with that link thank you all okay sir you can close the meeting thank you thank you sir